question I have right now, we are going to pretend that I am putting this towards the Catholics, the Church of England or the Anglican Church, the Presbyterians, and all of those kind of churches that would fit into the group of the churches that I just mentioned. I would say to them, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And they would probably answer something like, well, believe in God the Father, believe in Jesus Christ his Son, and believe in the Holy Spirit. If I put that question to the so-called fundamental churches like the Baptists, the Pentecostals, the Church of Christ, the Sunday Keeping Church of God, if I put that question to them, they would probably say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, accept him as your personal savior, and then you won't perish. Well, Jesus could have possibly said that, and in many ways with the, with the teachings of Jesus, he did in many areas of the gospel basically teach all of that because it is true you do have to believe in God the Father and you have to believe in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Yes, you have to believe in those things to be saved and as people will say, go to heaven. Jesus in Luke chapter 17 concerning perishing said this, and there were present at the season uh, some of them of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered them and said, Do you suppose that these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no, except you repent. You shall, you shall all likewise perish. He goes on to say, verse 4, this is Luke chapter 13, verse 4, or those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them. Uh, do you think that they were sinners above other people on, in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Jesus could have answered in many ways. But he was bringing out here that not to perish. One of the things that you must do if you are not going to perish is to repent. And repentance, my friends, that has to do with sin. Yes, most people, most Christians will acknowledge that, that, you know, we're all sinners and we all need Jesus Christ as our Savior to cleanse us from our sin. But few Christians really understand what sin is. I mean, do you, friends, do you know what the Bible definition of sin is? You have to know the Bible definition of sin and what the Bible calls sin if you are going to repent of being a sinner, acknowledging that you are a sinner and that you need the sacrifice of Christ and his shed blood to cleanse you from those sins. Well, here are the verses as to what is sin. 1 John 3, 4, Romans 7, 7 and Romans 3, 20. James chapter 2, verses 10 to 12, and Romans 7, 7. Very important verses right there that give you the Bible definition of sin. And Jesus clearly says here in Luke chapter 13 that you have to repent. You have to repent of being a sinner and sinning if you are not going to perish. 
Now let me ask again the Roman Catholics, the, Presby the Presbyterians, the Church of England or the Anglican Church and, and those that might be grouped in with them. Let me ask you this question again. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And they may answer and say, well, believe in God the Father, believe in Jesus Christ his Son, believe in the Holy Spirit. If I ask that question to the fundamental churches, the Baptists, Pentecostals, and such churches as would be classified in the fundamental Christianity category, their answer would probably be something like, well, there is nothing you must do. You cannot obtain salvation by works. Just believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as your personal savior. That would probably be one of the first replies that they would give you if you ask them, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, in the last video, we came to Matthew chapter 19, and a man came to Jesus and asked him just that question. What must I do to have eternal life? In the other Gospels of uh, Mark and Luke, it is what must I do to inherit eternal life? There's a difference between starting on something, going down the road, and then eventually inheriting what is at the end of that road. He asked him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him in verse 17, But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. He could have said, you must repent. You must accept me as your personal savior. He could have said those things. And those things are true in themselves. But Jesus chose to say another important aspect of inheriting eternal life is that you must be willing to keep the commandments of God. Keep the commandments. And the young man, the rich young man, asked him, well, which Lord? And Jesus answered and said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, why did Jesus quote from the last six of the Ten Commandments. He didn't quote from the first four, you will notice, because he is quoting from the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20. Read it, the Ten Commandments. He's quoting from the last six of the Ten Commandments. Why? Well, simply, the Jews had no problem with the first four commandments. Again, look at each one of them in Exodus 20. No other God no making graven image and bow, bowing down to them, not taking God's name in vain. The Jews had no problem with that. Keep the Sabbath day, the seventh day, the Sabbath holy. The Jews had no problem with that. They were doing that. By and large, the religious Jews had no problem with the first four of God's Ten Commandments. But they sure had problems with the last six of the Ten Commandments. And now we go further on to see that Jesus and the New Testament delves further into those Ten Commandments than just the letter of the law. This man answered Jesus and said, well, all these things I kept from my youth up. Yes, he probably did keep those things, believing that he was keeping those things. Uh, so, but then he went on and said, what do I lack? Well, this is where Jesus had the opportunity to go to the spirit of the law and to show that this young man, although he may have in an outward form and maybe in his own mind that he was keeping the Ten Commandments, but he didn't realize that he was seriously breaking two of them. And Jesus said to him, if you will be perfect, if you will do it the spirit of the law, go 
and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And you shall have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Jesus got to the spirit of the law. He knew that this young man didn't realize until Jesus pointed it out to him, as we'll see in a minute, that he was indeed breaking two commandments. He's breaking the first one. He was having another God before the true God. And he was breaking the tenth one, coveting. Coveting, yes, he may not have been coveting his neighbor's backyard, his neighbor's sheep, his neighbor's ox, may not have been coveting his neighbor's wife or all the good things that the neighbor had. Yes, so this young man was believing that overall he was keeping the Ten Commandments. He didn't realize until Jesus pointed it out to him that his riches had become a God. He was coveting his riches, breaking two of the Ten Commandments. Verse 22, and when the young man heard this saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He had great possessions. And those possessions had become a god unto him. Even unto be known until it was just pointed out to him, laid the cards on the table. Well, okay, if you want to really be doing the will of God, then get rid of your riches, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. And then he realized that he could not do so. His riches had become his God, and he was coveting his riches above serving God. He was breaking two of the Ten Commandments as amplified by Jesus Christ under the New Testament or the New covenant. Yes, Jesus took the opportunity here to say that you must be willing to keep the commandments of God if you're going to inherit eternal life. Yes, you're not marking them down and having a contest between doing them and not doing them so that you can gain eternal life by having more good times of obeying them than less times of obeying them, but you must have a mindset, you must have an attitude that is willing to do the Ten Commandments of God. And that, my friends, includes the fourth one. The fourth one has never been done away with. And many people may think that they are keeping nine commandments and that's all that they have to do is keep nine commandments because surely in this modern world, we don't have to keep the fourth one. And that is a serious mistake, my friends. The fourth one has never been torn away out of the Ten Commandments. It is just as living now as it was in the days of Christ. And Jesus said he was the Lord of the Sabbath day. And it is still in effect. You must be keeping the seventh day of the week as the Holy Sabbath if you are keeping the commandments of God. It's part of the commandments of God. Jesus clearly said, now I didn't write it, Jesus wrote it. You can see it with your own eyes in your own Bible. Jesus said, if you will inherit eternal life, keep the commandments, have a mindset of being of willing to do them. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God, but he that does the will of my Father in heaven. Jesus indeed expects you to have a mindset that through repentance, you have a change of mind, you're converted to indeed love the word of God, to live by, as Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, and to keep his commandments. You, that must be your mindset, is to be able to do that if you want to inherit eternal life. Yes, it's plainly written there. Plainly written, Jesus said it, not me. It's been in your Bible for 2,000 years. 
to inherit eternal life, you must be willing to keep the commandments of God. 